Hi everybody, it's Matt here, a local friendly neighbourhood vested with a migraine sufferer. Bit of a glut of videos in the last couple of days. It's because I've been really thinking about what actually is going off with the vestibular migraine and what kind of like the causes are, the core issues are. And in, have you, is, and as you may have seen the video I released yesterday, um, I've kind of, in my own mind, got two hypotheses in mind as to what um, is actually going on. Uh, the first one is that vestibular migraine is actually a symptom of a wider issue with the central nervous system. And the other hypothesis was that vestibular issue is the main issue and then that stirs up trouble for the central nervous system. So I think I explained in the video yesterday, I think the, the hypothesis I feel sits the most right with me at the moment is the first one that I explained there where actually vestibular issues are simply a byproduct of a wider issue with the central nervous system. So I kind of kind of did a video on that because I thought it was quite um, an interesting idea. And then I said, it's a hypothesis, so it could well be disproved. Remember, once upon a time, they thought the Earth was flat, but it was eventually disproved. Um, but as I said, it's the one that I feel most confident with or feel there's enough evidence to support at the moment. And that evidence is just simply based on talking to people, researching, sharing ideas with fellow sufferers. And like I say, and I've said before, I'm not a doctor, so I'm not saying this is gospel truth. It's just my hypothesis. So what I wanted to do was just actually kind of pull a few things together into a single video. So I did, I did a second video yesterday as well, which was about inflammation. And I actually wanted to then actually do a video that pulls together my hypothesis with also the inflammation aspect. So for those of you who don't know, um, things like migraine and asthma are actually an inflammation of the body. So for me, it seems quite, quite you know, logical that in the vestibular migraine sufferers, will probably have some sort of information going off somewhere in their body. Obviously, the vestibular migraine itself is an information. But my my kind of hypothesis takes it a little bit further. So once again, like I did on the previous video, I'm going to just click to a illustration. So that should help you understand. So here we go. So you should be looking at a table now. Um, it's actually, I've actually done it in uh, in Excel. <clears throat> so that's so it's actually a bit clearer than my crappy handwriting, which you all got the pleasure of looking at yesterday. So this is, in a nutshell, is my, the hypothesis I think at the moment most likely explains what's going on with vestibular migraine. As I said, it's just a hypothesis. It's up for debate. It's up for disagreement, all those kind of things. So in a nutshell, I think what's happening is basically there's, there's, you can see in the green box there, something happens to you. So I've called it a disruption here. So that could be a virus, an accident, it could be genes, it could be a number of things, to be honest. So that takes incident takes place. And then what I think happens is that causes inflammation of the body. So you can see the next box there. So the body gets inflamed uh, and that means you will get things like, for example, migraine, or I know a vestibular migraine sufferer who's got um, joints inflamed at the moment. So creates all sorts of problems. But then I think what also is happening is that the central nervous system is also kind of being inflamed in a way. So that inflammation disrupts the, the working of the central nervous system, so to speak. So what then happens is we then see a number of symptoms that, uh, that stir up as a result of the disruption to the central nervous system. So we have, obviously you can see in the top left, the vestibular issues. So that will be the, you know, the, the typical stuff like vertigo and that, you know, that sort of thing. So the, the, for me, in so in this hypothesis, vestibular and vestibular disturbances are just one part of a range of symptoms that you, you may well be getting. And as I said, I think the actual overall arcing issue is, is this issue with the central nervous system. So in this hypothesis as well, some of the, some of the, sort of fruitier, stranger symptoms that have been linked to vestibular disruption or disorder or migraine, I think aren't actually connected to the vestibular system at all. I think they are actually a result of the disruption to the central nervous system. So things like breathing issues, which of course asthma is also an inflammation, the heart chest issues, which I experienced myself, the blood pressure issues, which I experienced on my first ever episode. And then another one that's on here actually is digestion and bowel issues. So you've all seen on my videos before where if you've watched them before, um, I'm usually always having to pause because I've got a bit of heartburn and it gets a bit annoying. But I also, I uh, spoke about this in a different video, I can have some upset to my bowel now and then. And I was talking to a fellow sufferer last night who 
Um, I think his whole episode started when he was being tested for, for bowel disease. So that kind of, for me, fits into the jigsaw puzzle a little bit as well. And then right at the top there, we've got anxiety and depression. So yes, that could be a result of disruption to the central nervous system. It makes sense. But I've also got a smaller black line there. You can see that links vestibular issues to anxiety and depression because we know, and I've argued in previous videos, that the, the, the mood part of the brain is quite closely linked with the vestibular part so when the vestibular part gets disrupted or upset you can't help but have anxiety and depression but it also as I said figures that that might also be a result of the disturbance to the central nervous system so all in all I think it creates quite an interesting picture and I think it's quite hard to grasp at first that um that vestibular migraine could in fact just be one of part of the problem I suppose one manifestation of the problem um, but I, what I don't want people to, to watch this video and suddenly be absolutely shitting themselves or panicking that they've got something majorly wrong. It could be something very minor, couldn't it, that's affected the central nervous system. But because it's such a sensitive area, um, it could create like pandemonium. I mean, one of the reasons why I've kind of gone down this route is I was thinking about how could it, is it really logical that some kind of issue with your vestibular nerve would cause you to have dodgy breathing. And I just don't think it does. It just doesn't seem to make sense to me. So there has to be another explanation. So this is where I am going with this at the moment. So as I said, it's not um, it's not um, given fact. It's just a hypothesis like most science and most medical research is. But I thought I'd throw it out there because it is really interesting to discuss. So as I said in my other video, this, this scenario kind of presents a scenario, I suppose, a bit like the Star Wars films, when when you watch the first first two and a half star well first one and a half star wars films you probably thought the major evil and nasty fella in uh, villain of the piece was darth vader but what actually it transpires in towards the end of empire strikes back and then in return of the jedi he's actually there's actually a greater threat and evil above him who controls him so that's how i am seeing vestibular migraine at the moment that vestibular incident vestibular migraine vestibular disorder is darth vader and the actual more significant problem is the Emperor, the Emperor Palpatine, who's Darth Vader's boss. So that's how I'm looking at it. But as I said, please don't worry about this. I'm not saying that what the issue is with the central nervous system is anything major or life-threatening at all. Absolutely not at all. Because if it was, people like myself wouldn't have got better and Amy and people like that, we wouldn't have improved. Um, so please don't worry about that. One final point as well I should say is... Um, Another reason why I've kind of gone down this route for, in this hypothesis is my vestibular nerve has been checked by an MRI scan and also by a hearing test. So that showed that there wasn't any notable or significant damage to my vestibular nerves. So therefore, if they are not actually damaged in any way and creating, creating all these symptoms, then there has to be a different explanation for it. So I think that's just worth throwing in. So I'm going to come back to the camera now you've had a look at that diagram so with a click I should be back yep there I am so I hope you like that I just wanted to sort of pull together some of the ideas that are in the, the two videos I've done in the last couple of days because I think it was starting to get a bit bit messy so this was almost a bit like a stop it and tidy up video really pulling things together to explain so I guess it's kind of like it's kind of uh, my theory of everything the redo or the director's cut or something like that version um, just so that you've got it all in one place. So, yeah, as I said, do put down your own theories, see whether you agree with me, disagree with me. Um, to report anything anything that you think is worth noting. Cause for example, it wasn't until somebody mentioned to me in the comments about blood pressure that it, got, it reminded me that back in the day, during my first episode, I did have blood pressure issues. So it could be a key part of the, of the component, really, of the picture. So, and I should just say that in this scenario then if the issue is with the central nervous system maybe the treatment needs to refocus on treating whatever's happened to the central nervous system see there's that heartburn that I, I just mentioned so at the moment we're kind of treating the symptoms so we're treating the the, the knock-on effects of what's gone wrong maybe we need to refocus and treat the actual central nervous system so for example some medication that helps to calm the central nervous system for example and um, so maybe that's a trick we're missing so anyway i hope that you find that helpful i hope that kind of pulls things together from the last few days so you don't have to you know drag yourself across multiple videos of mine i do recommend the first one because i do discuss 
the more conventional hypothesis, which is that vestibular migraine that is the main cause and it dis disturbs the central nervous system. So it's worth watching that just, just for that. So I'll leave it with you there. Thank you for listening. And remember, as you were, you'll be again. Cheers.